All right, good day, everybody, and welcome back. Um, so, a little bit of a um, little bit of an obscure topic today. I thought I'd talk about the way that I've got one of my rigs set up, um, and you know, it's probably a little bit unusual. I know a few people have it, but um, basically, what I'm doing here is I've got an um, an active extension cable, and I thought it might be useful to anybody thinking about this or even anybody that's having issues with it just to see the equipment that I use because I know there can be issues when you're connecting things like USB long USB um, cables um, you know there's there's length limits on USB cables and um, you can run into issues so I just thought I'd go through quickly my setup so you can see um, how I do it and also if you can take anything away from that now, obviously, this is not going to work for everybody. Um, I'm in southern Australia, and the temperatures here mean that it doesn't get that far below zero as well. So I don't need to worry too much about, for example, leaving a USB-powered hub on my on my mount. I do leave, for those of you that don't follow my channel, so basically, one of my rigs I have set up like this with a cable that goes directly from my desktop that sat right down here next to me. It goes through my window here, there's a little bit of a sort of a wooden screening outside this window and then my mount's just directly opposite outside so it's really not that far physically from me so that's why I decided I wonder if I can use one of these um, one of these active extension cables to sort of you know basically connect my desktop which is my nice powerful machine that I want to use for processing as well directly to my gear to my camera and to my mount and it's worked out really well but I did have a few teething issues in the beginning, um, which just came from the fact that I really didn't know mu that much about cables or the limitations of them. So anyway, let's let's have a quick look at this. So like I said, this is connected from my desktop outside, and this is the cable that I decided to go for. I did a bit of research on this, and I decided you really don't want to skimp. Um, you don't want to skimp on quality in terms of your your active extension cable so as you might know there's like generally with a USB 3 cable there's a like a three meter limit is kind of the recommended length you know for your cable you don't really want to go beyond that and um, so what you can do is if you want to cover a, a longer distance you can use one of these cables and you can basically connect it to a hub a powered hub you know um, that's located close to the close to your gear in my case it's located and it's um, it's strapped onto the the tripod legs of my mount so this cable here if I just if I just blow it up let's have a look so you can see you know you've got a female end on one end apparently there's some integrated electronics on these repeater cables that I don't know whatever they do they boost the signal um, and obviously it it requires power as well. You do want to get a powered um, repeater cable, um, and then you've obviously got the the male end. So the, you know this ends on my computer, goes up through my window. Um, like I said, I've got it connected through some sort of screening, so it's not on the floor. And then eventually it goes down towards my mount, and I have this female end strapped onto the mount legs, the tripod, and um, that's why I have it then connected into a powered hub. And, you know, this cable now is sort of two years old and it is still going strong. I can recommend this one for anybody in Australia. Um, like I said, 125 bucks, um, but it's still going really strong. It's a really thick, robust cable, so it's, it's worked great for me. Um, now, of course, at the other end, you're going to need a hub. And when I first got into this, I did a bit of research. I didn't want to spend a ton of money but I actually got this particular hub here recommended on a, I think it was an Australian Astro Forum. It could have been a US one. And um, this served me really well. Now, obviously these things like this hub, they're designed to be used really indoors. They're not designed to be sat outside on a mount. Um, but like I said, it doesn't get that cold in Australia. You're still going to get a bit of condensation. So, you know, there are ways that you can mitigate it. But for me, I effectively just, you know, strapped this onto my mount. 
Um, it lasted, I would say, this particular hub here lasted me about between a year and a half and two years until I did start to get some issues with it. But like I said, I don't think that was any fault of this hub. I think it was the fact that I was just leaving it outside permanently. Um, I think I paid $40 for it. So, you know, as a way to get going, this this can be a really affordable, effective way um, to get yourself started. Again, it needs to be a powered hub, and this particular one does come with a little power adapter. You can't see it on here, but there's a little female input, and you do put a little um, power adapter. But, you know, this and that cable served me flawlessly for like a year and a half without issues. You can see this one's got a mixture of USB 2 and three hubs um, ports sorry so moving on to that um, I was looking at just replacing this with a second one basically I was just gonna get another MB hub and I thought oh well you know another 40 bucks it's not that bad and I came across this one which was um, I was gonna buy and then I found it sort of second-hand for about $40 and I thought okay well this looks all right and um, it's a bit more bit more upmarket I guess 130 bucks um, but again it gets really good reviews this particular hub um, it's a it's a powered hub again it's got like 10 USB 3 ports on it you know I'm only using three ports so you obviously don't need that many you don't need that many ports but if we have a look at it you can see here you've got your um, DC uh, 12 volt input and then your USB 3 connector cable there which again obviously would connect to your um, your active repeater cable so again this has served me really well I've not had any issues yet with this I mean I've only had it on for a few months but this has served me well um, and yeah no problems now again just make sure with all of these things what I did find in the early days is you will have issues if you make if you don't have these powered so what I would often find would happen is I would get things like camera download issues. Um, I used to think it was the cables that were connected between the hub and the gear, you know, like maybe those ZWO cables. But it turned out it was just the fact that at one time, um, when I first started playing around with this, I I can't remember which one I did, but I, I ended up not powering the, the hub itself. And um, I could actually tell because when you connect to your camera, if you open something like SharpCap, and I can recommend SharpCap as a good way to troubleshoot this, you'll notice when you connect to your camera in SharpCap, it will tell you at the top if that camera is connected via USB 3 or USB 2. It actually tells you in the title bar of SharpCap. And um, if you're not powering this, it will often tell you that that's connected via USB 2. And as well as that, there'll be other issues so like I said I was getting these camera um, I was getting these camera download errors like you know communication with camera unable to download the image blah 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 um, and it's easy to get misdirected then because I was thinking oh, I've got cable problems between my camera and it turned out it was actually just um, that I hadn't powered it in the early days so anyway make sure they're both powered and you should be all right moving on from that now recently, maybe not that recently, but a few months back, I came across one of these guys. So it's a Pegasus Astro control hub. And I thought, wow, like I found this like at a reasonable price, a guy that didn't want it anymore. So I got it second hand. It looks like it's brand new. And um, unfortunately, straight away when I connected this, I started getting those same camera download issues that I used to get. And... Um, I tried troubleshooting it. I thought to myself, it can't be anything wrong with the hub. You know, it takes a 12, 12 volt um, input, this hub. So it was powered and everything. Um, and I was trying to troubleshoot what the problem was. So I thought it must be the cables where one of the cables had gone between the camera. Tried changing the cables, still got the same error. So what I then did is I bought the hub inside just inside my office here and I connected it all up to the same camera and um, I didn't have any issues at all so it was basically it seemed like this didn't want to speak well to my Lindy 
um, active extension cable over here. They just weren't getting along. And I thought that seems an obscure problem. Like I found that quite a, uh, you know, I found that quite a stretch to think that it it would be the the combination of this cable and this this hub that really weren't working well together. So um, I emailed Pegasus Astro, and um, they came back to me, and basically all they had all they had to say was that unfortunately there are some compatibility issues between their control hub and certain um, certain cables, certain like active repeater cables. So, you know, I, d I can't say I fully understand how that works. And it's a bit of a shame because I do have this now, which is, um, which I, I can't use with my, with my repeater cable. Um, I might try and troubleshoot it a bit more. And if you guys have had any experience with this, maybe you figured it out or, you know, you've, you've had a similar problem. Do let me know. Um, but that's a bit of a shame because these, these hubs are very expensive. Um, I think to buy these brand new, there might be, I think there might be three to four hundred Australian dollars. So, and these things are designed to go like down to something like minus 30 degrees. So they're actually designed to sit outdoors as well. So it's a bit of a shame that I can't actually use this. Um, seems to be the way of astrophotography. Um, <laughs> compatibility issues and troubleshooting one thing talking to another thing. So anyway, um, that's just a recommended um, gear if you are considering these active extension cables and things to look out for. I hope it's been some help. I hope it's been some help to you guys. If you do get it working properly, it is a fantastic solution because you know all my files are directly on my desktop PC. Um, it means when I'm looking at anything or when I'm when I'm sort of you know. I'm never I'm never having to go at least for one setup. I'm not having to remote to it so there's no lag with it. You know, all my files are ready there to process um, on my main PC. So it's just really convenient if you can do it. Like I say, I understand uh, it's not going to be a it's not going to be practical for everybody. And my second rig, I do use a little Intel Nook, which works fine that I remote to. Um, but it is a bit more, obviously there's a bit of lag and I then have to transfer those files to my main um, my main desktop PC to process. If you do want some more information about cables, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, like I did a little bit with this, um, this is not a bad place to look, um, yourcablestore.com. I just found a nice article on here that talks about USB cable length limitations, um, talks about the maximum length, how you can get around those length limitations, talks about what an active repeater extension cable actually is, um, and you know various limits. So that's that's quite a nice um, article to read, and I'll, I'll stick the link in the description if any of you guys want to look further into this. So look, I um, hope that's been some use to somebody who might be considering this. Um, and um, I think that's that's it for today. I'll stop waffling on, as I'm sure I've gone, I'm sure I've gone on enough. So, hope you guys all have clear skies. I hope you're getting some clear skies. I'm not having the best of luck at the moment, but hopefully I'll get some images out um, soon. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Do consider a like and a subscribe if this was any use to you. And um, I'll see you guys soon. So catch you later and clear skies.